Hey guys, Kim Taylor with Kim Taylor Real Estate Group. I am here with my inspector, Brian Hughes, again with Journey Home Inspection. <laughs> talking today about, mm, or talking to first time home buyers. Yeah. Like, what do we look at when we're going to look at a home? Let's say the house is 1990. 1990. Yeah, so, 1980, 1990. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's got a little, going to have a couple years mm -hmm. on it. So what would be the first thing you're going to look at, you think? So everybody here in North Texas talks about foundations. Mm -hmm. It's a big, scary word. And oh, my goodness. Uh, and really, I start inspecting the house as soon as I start driving into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And a telltale sign for me is if we're going through a street and there's just big cracks all over it. There's a lot of patchwork, mm -hmm. a lot of dips. Or trees, a lot or of trees, trees mature yeah. trees with roots. That, and those are all great. Yeah. But that rocky road, that road is built on the same ground mm -hmm. soil that the house is built on. Right. So we might have some foundation issues. Yeah. And some folks will say it's not if, it's when you're going to have foundation mm -hmm. work done. Uh, and I try and tell people it's not necessarily a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. uh, foundations can be fixed. Obviously, tons of them have been. Tons of them will be. Yeah. And when you start getting into 30, 40 year old houses, they've settled. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't make slabs like they, they used to. They, there's a lot of engineering that goes into it. Uh, so, you know, let's, let's make sure the foundation's in good shape. Yeah. I mean, it used to be a big, scary thing for yeah. me as a new realtor, but like, the more years you do this, like nine times out of 10, well, I wouldn't say nine times out of 10, but you know what to look for. And it's not so big, scary anymore because right. if they come with a transferable warranty, great, yeah. then it's fixed. And Absolutely. you know, so not big, scary thing. Yeah. Okay. So enough about foundation. Cause that scares a lot of people, it but is. it's really not scary. Yeah. So what would you say? Number two, I mean, I, I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here and say probably the HVAC. HVAC. If it's, if it's, if it's original, yeah. An AC unit in Texas. Oh, yeah. You know, HVACs are, what, 12 to maybe 20 years, mm -hmm. depending on manufacturer. Right, right. Depending on how they were taken care of. I've seen, the oldest unit I've seen was a 32-year-old unit. That, that was, was still running? Oh, it was so cold in the house. What? And unbelievable. It's kind of like, oh. They got out every night. And <laughs> Don't even want to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but I've seen, you know, year-old units. Yeah. You know, C that crater, just, yeah. So, you know, with our extreme temperatures here in yeah. Texas, I mean, it's summertime in Texas right now, mm -hmm. 105 degrees. A couple of years ago, it was a negative five degrees. Mm -hmm. We use our heating and air conditioning. So not to go off on a bunny trail, but what are some things as homeowners you can do like right now? I mean, it's like 104 today. Yeah. What are some things we can do to make sure our ACs, you know, up to speed? I mean, yeah. Besides oh, so the important. obvious of changing your filters and mm -hmm. like, what else do I need to be doing? So honestly, I recommend to everybody that you get them serviced twice a yeah. year. Yeah. When you turn on the heater, mm -hmm. have a licensed professional tech come out mm -hmm. uh, and service the unit. They're going to clean the condensing unit. They're going to clean the coils, change filters, make sure it's full on free on, make sure it's working right. the way that it's intended to. And then in the springtime, or sometimes in January, when we start using yeah, our air conditioner, right. <laughs> have it serviced again. Yeah. And those will really help. It's just like taking your car in mm -hmm. to get the oil changed. Yeah. It's crazy simple and crazy easy, but people don't think about it. Right. And 10 years down the road, $800 <laughs> electric bill, and they just don't understand why. And it's because their air conditioners working the entire day to keep mm -hmm. it 80 degrees in the house. Yeah. One more quick question, because yeah. this is kind of an argument in my household. Uh -oh. um, if you're going to leave for the day, do you turn the air up to like, we keep ours literally about 73. Um, but like, if we're going to leave, it might get cranked up to 75. So then when we come home, we have to crank it back yeah. down. Is that good? Or is it better just to keep it at like 73 all day, a constant temperature? Because yeah. I feel like it kind of has to work harder to come back down. So it depends, I think, of how far you take it down. Okay. Our house, I get crucified quite a bit. <laughs> I do. 77 kind of going, but we've got fans going yeah. and everything else like that. 
72 at night, mm -hmm. 70 degrees kind of thing mm -hmm. at night. And usually I try and start to move it down in steps. Mm -hmm. You know, once the sun starts getting off the AC unit outside, I'll scoot it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I just have it programmed to, you know, go down a little bit. And okay. so by nine o'clock at night, it might be 70 degrees in our bedroom. Okay. And that's good sleep and so, weather for me. So not horrible to up, down, up, down I don't think versus it is. content. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. I think go. that's a good idea. Now you know. Okay, I think that's good. Foundation and HVAC, yeah. right? Yeah, two big common two ones big here ones. in North Texas. Yeah, that is yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, we'll see y'all next time for the next tips. Absolutely.